welcome to today's video. My name is Trisha and this here is Peaches, my red-footed tortoise. She is about two and a half years old now. She has grown so much as you can see. Um, she used to be so teeny tiny um, but today we're going to be talking about something pretty controversial that has come up because as you can see maybe um, she has a tiny little bit of pyramiding going on on her shell. And any reptile keeper that keeps tortoises, this is like their number one fear and it's always like viewed so negatively. So I've been doing a ton of research on this to figure out what the issue could be and I learned a lot from it. So I wanna share everything that I've learned through all of my research and make you guys feel a little bit more comfortable on the topic because there isn't really too much information on it. But I feel like a lot of people are just like hated on for having like a little bit of pyramiding here and there. So we're just going to jump right into it, talk about what it is, how you can prevent it, what causes it, and all that good stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and put Peaches back because she is not really enjoying this right now. She's probably going to pee on me. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is what is pyramiding. So when you see a tortoise's shell, normally they should be very flush and flat, especially with red-footed tortoises. That's typically what they look like. Um, but every now and then you will see all of these kind of raised scoots and they kind of look like pyramids, which is why it's called pyramiding. It's pretty much what it is. Um, sometimes it can be pretty mild and sometimes it can be really, really kind of gross looking and it just looks very much like it causes the tortoise like sometimes it can cause them issues with mobility and that's obviously not something that you want that's like the worst case scenario um, and it can also just give you a little bit of insight it can be a form of metabolic bone disease depending on how bad the pyramiding is so there's a lot of different things that go into it just because there is pyramiding doesn't mean that your tortoise has metabolic bone disease either so I don't want to get that confused um, but it's just one of the symptoms that could stem from that as well so some people will see some tortoises with like really crazy pyramiding and think it looks really cool um, and typically it's something that you want to avoid when you're caring for a tortoise but every now and then you are gonna experience it a little bit um, so we're gonna jump into all of the different reasons why this can happen because scientists aren't even fully aware of what causes it exactly. There are a lot of different guesses. So that's all of the research that I've been gathering because when I noticed it on Peaches, I've been like freaking out and it makes me feel like a bad pet owner and I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? And then also I've had people on the internet that are also like coming for me. I don't know what it is. People are not very understanding on the internet and like I love when people are trying to be helpful on the internet but a lot of the times that's not how it comes across at all. It seems like people are like waiting for me to do something wrong to like attack me because they just don't like me because of what I do. Um, so I get a lot of just like negativity and I was getting some of that from someone that wasn't even trying to help that was just accusing me. And it's what I see all the time. Like what this person was saying was your humidity is off and that's why you have pyramiding. And that's what I always see. Everyone always relates it back to the humidity issue. And humidity is not the only reason that could cause pyramiding. There's actually a ton of other things that can go into it. So if you are worried about someone else's tortoise with pyramiding or something, don't just focus on humidity because there are so many other components and they're all just kind of guesses as well because there is no scientific reason that they've figured out that just causes it. There's like a lot of different things that it could be. So it's just a matter of keeping all of those things in mind and monitoring them and making sure that you're giving your tortoise the best care. So now we're gonna jump into all of the different components that can cause pyramiding. The first one is humidity. So it's not the only one, that is the one that I feel like people hyper focus on, especially for species like a red-footed tortoise because they do require such a significantly high humidity requirement that can be fairly hard to achieve and it is a big challenge for a lot of reptile keepers. So if people aren't able to do that, it can be one of the reasons why your tortoise is having some pyramiding on the shelf. 
Um, this is especially important for redfoots in particular for when you have it as a baby because the babies typically like to go in little humid hides. They go in like these little pockets. They do it in the wild so it's important to provide that in captivity as well. Um, so providing them with a little humid hide with some moist moss is very, very good for them, beneficial for their shell, and will help to prevent pyramiding. So um, humidity, again, it's, it's one of the basic care requirements that you're going to be looking into with keeping any reptile. So you want to make sure that you are doing it properly with your tortoise as well. I find that the best thing to do is mist down the enclosure every single morning, every single night and make sure there is a large water bowl and a nice moist substrate that does get a breathing period during the day where it can dry out. And again, with humidity, you really wanna make sure that you have a shallow, large water dish for your tortoise to be able to soak in every single day so it can hydrate itself and that's also gonna boost the humidity. So it's just very important. All of these things are things that I have completely mastered in Peach's PVC enclosure. So I know that that is not the reason why she's having mild pyramiding. So we're gonna get into some of the other reasons that it could be. The next one is improper UVB. So UVB is critical for a ton of reptiles and it is for red-footed tortoises as well. They are typically known to be a tropical species, meaning that they are not like a desert species that's going to be basking during the sun. They typically like to go in the shade during the day. They come out and forage here and there. They may soak a little bit, but then other than that, you're typically going to see them hiding. So um, from all of the research that I have gathered, the recommended UVB for red-footed tortoises has always been a T5 5.0 tropical bulb. Uh, there's also Arcadia brains that go by different percentages, but it would be the shade dwelling species. Um, for me, that is what I have used for peaches her entire life so far. Because I am seeing mild pyramiding, I decided myself that I was going to switch out her UVB and give her a 10.0 instead. That way she's getting a little bit more UVB when she does come out from her little shaded areas just to make sure that she's getting enough. I do check the Ferguson zones and make sure that they are also in the right area. And if you have a solar meter, I'm gonna let you know because um, it's a really handy thing to just be aware of. Solar meters are expensive, but they're very helpful to make sure that your animal's getting the right amount of UVB. So for red-footed tortoise, um, they should have, they're in zone two, which is partial sun, occasional basker. So they should have the gradient of 1.1 to 3.0. So I was able to achieve this with my 5.0 and now I have the same thing with my 10.0. So it really is a matter of figuring out what's best for your tortoise. It's confusing because I've always seen to use a 5.0 and then recently doing more research, I saw somewhere else that you should be using a desert basking bulb for these guys, which is a 10.0. So there is mixed information. I'm trying something new just because I am noticing a little bit of pyramiding on her and I'm wondering if maybe that could be the reason why. Um, so I definitely wanted to share that in today's video. If you guys keep red foots, I would love to hear what type of UVB that you think is best and what you use for yours as well. Um, because now I'm testing something out new. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here and make sure that she has the right care. And obviously when it comes to UVB sunlight, natural sunlight outside is the healthiest, best thing that you could possibly give your tortoise. So if you can take your tortoise outside when the temperature is nice, that is the best thing for your tortoise. They will be so happy and it is so great for their shells as well. A lot of people just keep red foots depending on where they live outside, which is fantastic. Um, you, there is more of a notice of pyramiding when you do keep tortoises inside. So I really do think that UVB is a big factor in a little bit of pyramiding here and there. The next one I was pretty shocked to learn about um, I guess it makes sense though, and that is improper diet. Um, I made an entire extensive video on red-footed tortoise diets and I learned so much information and that is exactly what I do for my red foot when I feed her. So if you need more insight to what to feed a red-footed tortoise, please check out that video. It will be very, very helpful. Um, but there are people that kind of slack in that department and they 
some cases feed them like dog food. Like I have heard horror stories where tortoises literally are just living on dog food and their shells are a complete disaster. There could be other elements like UVB and humidity. Again, like you have to keep in mind the entirety of the care. Um, but dog food is not something that you should be feeding your tortoise and they need a lot of other things in their diet. They have so much that should be in their diet. The more various things that you can give them, the better. So if you have an improper diet, it can lead to them not growing properly and their shell not growing properly. Another thing that I learned is that if you give tortoises too much protein, which dog food has a lot of protein in it, which can lead to the pyramiding because of that, but protein in general, if you're giving too much to your red foot, it can cause pyramiding. And um, ways that tortoises usually get their protein is through their insects and bugs. So I don't know about you guys, but my tortoise is not really into protein so much. I've tried giving her snails and I don't think she was a fan of that. Um, the only protein that she kind of will accept is um, black soldier fly larva and I only give it to her maybe one to two times a month. Um, but if you overdo that and give them too much protein, it will again just cause their shell to grow weird and it can cause some pyramiding. So it's something to keep in mind. Again, more information about their diet and the things that they should be eating is in that whole other video that I made. The next one is too much food. This I feel like could be another potential reason for why Peaches is having a little bit of mild pyramiding because she loves to eat and I think that I possibly have been overfeeding her and again it's hard to find information on how much and how often you should be feeding your red-footed tortoise. So the first year definitely you should be feeding them once a day every single day um, but then you typically should slow down after that and from everything that I read, it says like every couple of days, every other day. So that's typically what I've been doing for peaches ever since she reached a year. I slowed it down a little and I would try to do every other day, but I would feel bad and she would come out looking for food and like I'd give her a little snack still. So she'd still be eating like something like here and there. It, so basically it wasn't every other day. It was a little bit of something kind of every day. And then I slowed down a little bit more and a little bit more, but I'm wondering if it just wasn't enough and I was still overdoing it. So it's just really hard to figure out a balance and try to do the best thing for your tortoise. Um, so I also read something else that said, it was really random because everything I read said to feed your tortoise like every other day. And then I found another page that said to feed your adult red-footed tortoise once a week. And I'd never heard of that. I've never heard of doing it that infrequently. So I'm wondering if maybe every two to three days for an adult might be more adequate. Um, again, it's just things to monitor and I'm kind of just playing around with it right now. I am noticing a little bit of pyramiding, so I'm making a little bit of changes. I'm going to be feeding a little bit less frequently, adding a little bit more UVB with that 10% bulb and kind of trying to gear what it could be. And the last potential reason could be improper supplementation. So tortoises will still be needing a calcium supplement. Um, you can use calcium with D3 or calcium without D3 because they typically don't bask too much. I do like to offer with D3 at least one to two times a week. And then I might do um, one of the days without D3. So that's kind of my um, schedule with peaches. Um, I also like to offer her some bee pollen. It has a little bit of extra nutrients and minerals in there for her. Um, but calcium is very important, so you do want to make sure that you are supplementing for your tortoise because it's very important for their health. And again, it'll help to avoid metabolic bone disease as well. So the main things that um, are wrong with pyramiding is if it gets to a certain point, it can cause them issues with mobility. It can also lead to metabolic bone disease. So these are very, very important things that can really affect your tortoise and you want to avoid. So the best thing that you can do is just make sure that you are giving the right care to your tortoise. If you notice someone that has a little bit of pyramiding, 
don't just assume you know what it is because scientists don't even really know what the cause could be and there's so many different aspects that go into it so i'm getting i'm just kind of sick of seeing people be like oh yeah your humidity is off their humidity is off it's always the humidity that people grasp onto and i've had the right humidity for peaches this entire time so that's why i'm like it doesn't make sense. I'm like, what is going on? What can I possibly do until I did all this research and I'm finding out there's so many different things that go into it and it, it involves all of the care. They also need proper temperatures, proper UVB, proper humidity, proper food, proper amount of food, how often they're fed, the amount of protein, all of these things are so important. So you just need to make sure that you are giving the right care to your tortoise. Try to navigate from there. If you are worried about any health concerns, of course, see a vet. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make this video to bring a little bit more insight to this topic because I feel like it's not talked about often enough. And I just completely panicked when I noticed that my tortoise was having a little bit of this issue. Um, as I'm sure most other people do, especially because in the reptile community, it's just so frowned upon. It's like, oh, your care is wrong. But there's other things that go into it. So just as long as you are giving proper care to your tortoise, just breathe and just let it be. Because if it's just mild pyramiding, it's really not going to affect them whatsoever. It's not something that they can really notice as long as they still have their mobility. They don't have metabolic bone disease they can still thrive with having a little bit of pyramiding. And it is very common for people that keep tortoises in captivity inside. So I just hope this video helps someone else feel a little bit more comfortable because when I noticed it on mine, I was just panicking and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? And I felt like the worst reptile keeper ever. Um, I talked with the breeder that I got mine from. She's like, oh no, that's normal. She looks totally fine. You're doing a great job. And I'm like, okay, but I still just feel like there's something wrong. So I'm just researching and researching. If you want more information, Camp Kennan is my favorite tortoise reptile channel. And he has a video on this as well that just made me feel so much more comfortable with pyramiding. It was really interesting because he was saying that with, um, what is it, leopard tortoises? Yeah, it was leopard tortoises. That some of them actually have some pyramiding in the wild and that they think that they are actually evolving to have a little bit of pyramiding in order to be able to flip over because if they get flipped on their backside, if they have little pyramids, it helps them to get right backside up. So that's really interesting too. So there's just so much and scientists don't really have like an exact answer for this issue. So if you notice other people with a tortoise that has pyramiding and you want to offer some advice or something, this video might be helpful. It's not to shame people whatsoever. I don't want people being shamed for pyramiding anymore. Um, I want there to be more knowledge, more understanding, and for the people that do notice it on their tortoises to just go through and check all of these things in their care to make sure that they're not missing something for their tortoise. So I hope that this video was helpful. Um, if you guys have any other questions or anything, go ahead and leave it in my comment section and I will see you guys in the next one.